Hello everybody and thank you for watching the Sport of Kings on this weekend. First up, we want to let you know we are covering the Ultimate Horse Racing Championship which was held last week. But before we get to it, we want to introduce you to an amazing couple who have probably the toughest job here at Hastings Racecourse. That would be Cindy and Darcy Barraby. As for what they do, we're going to show you. We're troubleshooters. When things go wrong with uh, equipment or with a horse or something, we try to get in there and limit the amount of <laughs> chaos, as it were. You, can, you have to be a quick thinker and, and not be afraid to get in there in a dangerous situation. Most people don't want to do it because it's very stressful. People's lives can be in danger and it's up to you to prevent something from happening. So that's, that's very stressful for some people, but for us it's just part of the the job. Yeah, you have to be somebody that doesn't, the adrenaline doesn't kick in until well after the incident. So you have to be able to think clean, like very, quite clearly while things are happening. Obviously the most important part of being an outrider is your ponies. Yes. Absolutely. They're the job. If you're not on a good to excel, excellent horse, you might as well just stay in the barn because you're not going to be able to do the job out here. Cindy schools all our ponies and she does an incredible job of it. And I just try not to undo the training that she's done, so. Where did you discover these horses? Uh, <coughs> all of them right now are uh, x race horses. Really? Yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, it's almost easier to use them because they've been out here, they've seen the crowd, they've seen the horses running by, and nothing bothers them. If you bring a horse from off track, it can be dead broken. This will freak them out in here. We they, have had off track horses, but it, it's nice taking uh, ex thoroughbreds and giving them another life. And they love running, so, you know. Yeah, that's the thing. Thoroughbreds are bred for that instinct to get up there and be up there head and head. So you don't have to teach, you know, inst you don't have to teach them that aspect of the job. Do you guys have a plan when you go out there? I'm the lead outrider, so I take the front end. But, and the same point, if there's a lot of six and a half furlongs and Darcy has to do a lot more traveling, we'll switch it up a little so that his pony gets a break and my pony goes the long way. We alternate so yeah. that we're, we're able to cover either position. And we work really well. We know each other's moves and ponies' capabilities and whatnot. So uh, we have our own personal radios, so we will surprise the other one if something's acting up a little bit that's out of the other person's sight. So we're always on top of the field, whatever's going on. Cindy, what are those positions you take before the race? Uh, I'm on the lead, so I'm in front of all the racehorses. Darcy's behind all the racehorses. We always try to keep the horses in between us. If somebody goes by us, we give them crap and say, get back in line, because it's very important that they stay between us. And then when we get to the gate, Darcy will follow him behind into the gate, and if one gets loose, he's there, but if one breaks through the front, I'm there. So we're always trying to cover all our angles so that they're always protected, as it were, so that if one gets loose, one of us is there. They're in the gate, they break. What do you guys do now? I will stay in that corner, so if anything goes wrong down this... The problem with this racetrack is we have blind spots. What do you mean by that? The bushes, the yeah. bushes that are there, and or the even boards. the tote board. So we try to make sure one of us is where we can see half the track and the other one's where they can see the other half. on the field at all times. Yeah, because uh, the, we, we were doing it as the tubs used to do it and we'd kind of move around, but a horse broke down in this turn and neither one of us saw it. Yeah, it, nobody. It, it had broken its back and it was just lying there. So neither Darcy nor I knew that there was a horse down there and the stewards didn't tell us. And that was scary because all them horses are gonna finish the race and now there's a horse lying on the track. So now we space ourselves so that we have a full vision of the whole track between the two of us. And then on the back side, after the race, as they come by, I'm ready to take uh, either the jockeys will shout to me for uh, riders claim a foul and they'll, they'll say against the four and then they, the, the position. And then I relay to the stewards exactly what the rider has said to me. And so that way, we, uh, that's how riders' claims of bell come in. They're reported by me or whichever outriders on the back after the race. Darcy, we got some extraordinary video. Okay, that day, uh, a horse, the gate crew had a hold of the horse and they had a lead strap through its, through the, uh, uh, through the chin strap. Uh, th that broke, so the horse got unloaded the rider and then proceeded to head down the, down the track. I was able to cut it off with an off-handed catch 
And that's the first time I've ever made an off-handed catch where my pony couldn't actually get in front of it. As I was aware that rail was coming and I was just hoping my pony could get in front, get in front and push them out. It's like our, our ponies will catch the horse and then our pony will push them to where we want. That time I didn't get there <laughs> as kids where I wanted to be. And so we both went down and we ended up under the rail. And so to do that over again, I would have turned that horse loose <laughs> just before we got to the rail. We're watching you right now. What is going on? With your deep, with deep. Um, when a horse drops a rider right out of the gate, it would be really fun to catch him right off the bat. But for the safety of the riders, we let it go by. Because if we miss that catch and the horse turns the wrong way, now there's going to be a loose horse running the wrong way. So we try to make, at the time, make sure the horse just runs the right way with the horses. And then when the race is over and it's safe to catch the horse, then we'll catch the horse. But if, if you watch the DVD at first, I don't catch the horse. I just make sure it goes with the herd. But then after the race, Darcy did the same thing. When it came by him, he just made sure it kept going the right way because it's very scary if they go, you know, they're both going 35 miles an hour and for them to connect, not good. You both approach the winner's circle. What's going through your mind and how can you prevent that? There's nothing I can do to prevent it. All I did was try to stay away from the horse to not push him that way. And one of the nice things about catching is if they have blinkers on, you can sneak up behind them. So I came around, if, if you watch the slow motion, you, you notice more in the slow motion. If you watch it, I came away from the horse, then went back down to him, got slightly behind him so he couldn't see my hand coming, and then I grabbed the lines. Because he was afraid of my pony and didn't want to be caught. And I was afraid of him going in there because we've had that bad incident where that, that other horse went right. crashing through there. Darcy, is there something that can be done to help you guys? Uh, position? What we really need, and I mentioned it to the management and whatnot, is we need a visible rail there. So we need a, nothing is really going to prevent a horse from crashing through a barrier short of a massive <laughs> <laughs> structure. But uh, a visible, a visible white rail would prevent them from, from coming in there like that. Kind of what you have by the paddock. Exactly, exactly. Uh, only the craziest one will jump over top of that yeah. thing. <laughs> but but they, see, they see that open spot and they go, hey, let's go in there, and it's scary. Yeah. So many variables in how you catch a horse, and you have to be so aware of everything. What's in front of you, what's to the side, what's coming at you. Tunnel vision is the worst thing oh, you can get. Oh, it's your enemy. <laughs> um, yeah, there's lots of times when there's a loose horse, and we have to rein ourselves in. We, yeah. we don't make the catch till it's safe. And our or ponies, our ponies are, 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 are quite eagle, <laughs> eager to you know get in there and grab them, and our ponies get mad. But you have to pick the safest time to if the grab. If there's two of us and we're together, and I say Darcy, back me up, then I'll go in and make the catch. That way, if the horse turns or anything, Darcy's there to get it. But if we're not together, we never. If the horses are running, we never try to catch them. Teamwork is so yeah. important, especially on a racetrack where you only have two outriders. During the post parade. Although you're not with the jockeys, is there much camaraderie going on between the riders and the pony? Like oh, yeah. If you were ponying? Well, uh, they'll let us know if they have a bad horse. They'll let us know if one's tough to pull up and they're going to need help. Because they know we're there for them. And we let them know we're there for them. So they let us know. They, they're always talking to us. How long can your ponies last doing this? And how long can you guys last doing this? Oh, forever. <laughs> it's, well, it is hard on your body. Your this your uh, right shoulder and arm ligaments and whatnot, they start to go. You know, like I dislocated a number of things <laughs> that day. I dislocated a, one of my fingers and and bruised my ribs and and whatnot. But uh, no, it's incredibly hard on the body. But well, you uh, got to think these horses are revved up to run and they want to run and they don't want to stop. They want to keep going despite anything. So. But when you slow down, it's like anything in life. When you slow down, <laughs> you might, there might be, you will stop. 